and they wouldn't know who invented it, but the fact is they're going to use it as a solution, and they can do it in yeah. any any neighborhood. So, so is the uh, labor that you need uh, to put up these bottle schools a highly specialized, highly trained labor? No, actually, no. The, the nice thing there about appropriate solutions, technology solutions, is the fact that we can get you know we can, as long as you you know you have a step by step how to do it. Okay. Uh, people that are not trained, uh, you know, have the facilities to put it up. Uh, two people. So they don't that, have to be skilled laborers to, uh, to put up it's a bottle it's, it's stacking on top of each other. Mm. So. so it's a simple enough. Now, this is the, the amazing thing. We put it in a fun run because the thing there is it's not just the school, mm -hmm. but you have to put it in something that can be done to fund and get the, get the, get the hollow block. So what we're doing is putting it in a system where people can run mm -hmm. uh, last Sunday, bring two PET bottles, and at the same time with your running fee, uh, that will be the labor, and at the same time the, the other you know the other materials. And in one run, you get like uh, we got five thousand bottles in Great. one run, plus yeah. the money to make it into uh, mm. to to rebuild a whole school. So it's just putting it in a system yeah. uh, that can be applicable in any township, in any community to rebuild. Because mm. we see this cycle of destruction, reconstruction becoming more and more expensive if you only have modern technology of cement, steel, and glass. What yeah. we're thinking of is instead of keeping that, you know, that destroyed school and then, you know, putting some kind of uh, cheaper material like uh, palm leaves and, you know, mm. cocoa lumber, right. it's time really to start protecting our citizenry. And, and mm. you know, remember that schools are the bomb shelter where everybody runs to in case right. of typhoons. So the point is why not use uh, new ideas mm. to really start solving problems? Yeah. If you had a school built with bottles and you were hit by a flood, I mean, is this uh, even more durable than a conventionally built school or would it still, in a way, uh, uh, collapse uh, under the flood? You, you know, it, it all depends on actually how the, the, the school is built because if it retains the, retains the water at a certain point, something's going to give in. So mm. even the way that school's designed, it has to accept the fact that flooding will be a consistent problem of the future. Right. Basically, there will be a flooding lifestyle mm. uh, in, in the future. So when Al Gore came, in, came here, he yeah. said, be ex expect more floods in the future, more, mm. more intense rain and more intense drought. So the bottle school is both a great insulator, mm -hmm. but at the same time also when you need to reconstruct, it's a great rebuilder. So, mm. you know, what, rebuilding schools one bottle at a time. When you don't have money, you know, we've got to figure out what to do in the future. Remember, uh, the Philippines is not an emitter of, of carbon. And so the point is, what's going to happen if this continues to happen mm -hmm. and we continue to feel the effects of climate change? We've got to already start planning for the future. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we're doing is any solution that can begin now, because when it, you know, five years down the road, when it's too late, we don't want to start figuring out what to do then. Sure. Well, how much would, how many bottles would you typically have to, to have if you were to build maybe uh, a standard sized classroom? Uh, we're hitting about uh, 2,500 bottles. But if how, you, big a, how big an area would that make? Uh, this is about 65 square meters, and we're talking, talking maybe one fifth of the cost. Yeah. yeah. So the, the, the thing there is anybody can now see the bottles that you throw away. Any community, if you look at even one village, there's enough bottles there to build. And so there, it's, it's just really redesigning the way people are thinking. Instead of charity and always waiting for people to donate, mm. uh, they can start rebuilding this kind of community centers, this kind of, well, you know, you're yeah. looking at the future of the, of the, of the children right. uh, in an innovative way. Mm. Is there a standard uh, blueprint for these bottle schools that you normally would have to uh, hand out to these communities. Right. I mean, you got you have to teach them a step by step. Mm -hmm. uh, like for example, you can fill it with water and stack it on top of each other with mortar of cement okay. in non-earthquake areas. But in a place like Taguig, urban areas, you can you have to fill it with uh, the stabilized soil mixture okay. uh, to make it tough. Now, we are gonna try to put a step by step of it as we keep on building. Mm -hmm. But the amazing thing there is one day this is replicable anywhere and everywhere in the Philippines. This is uh, we actually came up with. Uh, with a uh, with a sample on an island, and basically we floated uh, four thousand bottles behind a motorized banca, because uh, moving large amount of materials is costly, the barge and everything. So float the bottles, fill them with water, and then build a medical clinic on an island. So new ways of doing things. Mm. If you know, if if poverty uh, is the challenge of the future, and yeah. climate change makes it worse, then we should be open to all solutions. So, so you didn't actually have to. Uh, uh, 
bringing in the bottles as cargo on a boat. No. You just floated them on the water behind put it the in, boat. Put it in the yeah. net. Yeah. Either the same net that they use for fishing and then just drag it behind the banca mm. uh, because it floats it has very little drag coefficient yeah. and just drag it and then just dump it on the on the on the other side now you can use sand fill it with sand or fill it with water yeah. uh, sand of course is much more durable but mm. you know 600 years imagine the number of people that can benefit from that while waiting for a budget to actually land on that sure, island sure now what about the uh, um, the cost that would would go in. I mean, uh, I can imagine it's actually minimizing the cost to uh, rebuild or put up a new school. Right. You have a uh, 65 or 60 square meter uh, um, room or a building. Right, right. Now, how much would it cost to put it up? We're talking maybe uh, hitting about 100,000 uh, pesos. Mm -hmm. uh, we can make it cheaper with community participation, but, you know, uh, as we're building here in the Philippines, that's we're just realizing uh, what that would take for yeah. a classroom. But, you know, uh, there will be leap and bounds, leaps and bounds here as we try to figure out. Now, the most expensive part is the roof. Uh, okay. We're still figuring out how to do that and how to make it cooler. So yeah. it's it's a it's a process uh, that's happening, but at the same time, we're making uh, hmm. large-scale strides. Because with the plastic bottles, uh, does that actually insulate the room, or yeah, well, there's it, no insulating it, 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 it's, it's thick. It's you know, it, it has it, it's uh, you know, it doesn't allow the heat to transfer so easily. Mm -hmm. It's strong. Uh, and at the same time, you know, uh, you're talking about the wind, the wind power that's coming in. So uh, you're actually uh, preventing this kind of wind loads from breaking the structure. So mm. it's, it, it, it's pretty tough. You know, yeah. we, we actually were uh, filling up uh, uh, the bottles and a truck actually uh, lost brakes and hit the, hit the bottles and the, the bumper basically bent. Really? Uh, it, 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 it's, a pretty, it's a pretty tough uh, So technology. it's like a bunker, huh? In, in the yeah, sense, it's bunker it, strength. Well, if you put a two and a half liter, uh, you're asking for, you know, bunker strength. Yeah. But, you know, we, we prefer to just lessen the cement and everything by making mm -hmm. it smaller. Now, you're, you're talking about uh, putting up uh, one of Bottle School here. In Where? Tagig, in Tagig, Tagig uh, working with the mayor, uh, his mm -hmm. administration. Working, of course, with Pepsi, Secon. Uh, we're really looking at Insular Life. All of these people are coming together, and mm -hmm. they gave us, you know, uh, this, the, the, the funds to really make a, a big difference. So we're starting here in Taguig. So is Pepsi donating the bottles? Yeah, they're donating uh, <laughs> 9,000 bottles plus. They're right. funding. Uh, so there won't be any shortage of Pepsi. In the stores. Well, you know, the nice thing there is, is they're making this their CSR, so they're accepting all other products with it. But the nice right. thing there is uh, we're realizing that it's not just the building, but the whole movement of using, especially in the rural areas where they don't have the funds to, like, get all of that and recycle it in Manila. Uh, our provinces are being, you know, uh, submerged, not in floods so much as plastic. So right, this will be right. a great way to start using it for community improvement instead of community, community deterioration, which is, you know, mm. having this huge amount of plastic hanging mm. around. Well, what does the DepEd say about all of this? DepEd is a partner. Yeah. We've been working with them uh, the past couple of years. We've been building earthen schools with them. We've been building bamboo schools with them. Mm. Uh, the United Architects of the Philippines have, very, have been very supportive uh, about this. They've thrown competitions with us. Uh, and then you're going to see another, uh, uh, another architect come in. He's one of the leaders of the, the, this kind of uh, competitions that help us design with new technologies or sustainable technologies that is making an impact. And DepEd... Uh, has been very open. They've given us, uh, you know, following certain steps and guide rules, uh, carte blanche to tr start experimenting. Because really, if you have 64,000 classrooms that are not working, you yeah. better figure out what to do. Because the, you know, the problem of lack of education will be a stronger damage uh, to our society uh, than, you know, than, 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 you know, especially in a competitive society. So whatever it takes to solve a very modern problem like lack of classrooms.